The governors of Nigeria's 36 states have called on the National Minimum Wage Committee to consider the ability of individual states to pay, as well as peculiarities before reaching a decision on the next minimum wage. In addition, the governors highlighted the need for state policing as a critical amendment in the ongoing 1999 uh, constitutional amendment proceedings to correct a fundamental flaw in the national security architecture. Those were some of the recommendations in a statement issued at the end of a meeting of the Nigerian Governors Forum on Thursday. Dayo Shobo Ali is a Rice News analyst and he joins us now to X-ray this matter, especially the call for wage decentralization. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Shobo Ali, good as always. Good afternoon. Oh, oh. Being here as usual. Very good. Uh, firstly, when we talk about wage decentralization, what does this entail? Uh, and is Nigeria in tune with such narrative in view of current socio-economic challenges, you think? Of course. That is like uh, reminding us that we are a federation, that we run a federal system, not a unitary system. In the governors appealing to the National Committee on Wage Restructuring to take into consideration the peculiarities of various states, uh, it's like putting the cart before the horse. So putting the cart before the us. Because essentially, it is the governors who should tell us what they have in their kitchen and what they want to pay or what they can afford to pay to workers. Because you see, uh, in economics, he who pays the paper, he takes the tune. And you should call, uh, cut your coat according to your cloth or your size. That is the basic principle that should be practiced there. But it's being ignored. And people are taking it as, taking it as if it is a, a debating society on wages. Mm. Because even the 30,000 Naira minimum wage, they say some states have not paid them. And then the NLC leader pointed out that some of those governors who have not paid are still on the committee to consider this. So it is an anomalous situation. But then it's the Nigerian situation. Um, the strike option have been so banalized that it has little or no threat now. Mm -hmm. The protest system has been so uh, popularized and demeaned that it does not threaten anybody no more. Do you get me? Unlike, see what happened in Senegal. The uh, president did not want to go, postponed election to, to December. But well, people fought him legally, democratically, in the courts. And you see now, they, 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 they appealed and I reappealed until he was told you have to hold the election, do you get me, mm -hmm. before your expiry date on April 2nd. Yeah. And they have the election on Sunday. That is democracy at work with serious-minded people in a serious-minded policy. I don't think we are. Because we trivialize literally everything. My own issue on this, two things. They may sound strange, but that's my own idea. You see, in the U.S., they have the, the, the Biden administration is using diversity, inclusion, and equity mm. mean? to redress the so-called evils of uh, slavery. Some the Republicans don't like it, but I like the concept. Diversity, uh, inclusion, and uh, that is what we need to apply in all aspects of our life. We have unity in diversity, but then, you see, it is a one-sided unity in diversity, in which the South carries along the North on all issues. Yeah. And when the North puts his foot down, the, the, the South backfires. Mm. But then you are running a federal state. Do you get me? Every area has its peculiarities, like the governors rightly noted. Mm. But then the people should start in their own court. They should tell us, okay, given if they are really in charge of their state, mm. they should know their resources, their capabilities, and what they have. Let them tell anybody who's coming to them that this is what we have. This is what we can afford. If you cannot take our wage, don't come here. Mm. It is a federation, yeah. 36 states. And you have immense choices all over to know where you want to go to earn a living. Mm. Given your education, your trade, even your religion, mm -hmm. it has to come to that. So let's practice our federalism. Mm. And I think we'll move somewhere. Very well said, Mr. Shibwa. <clears throat> I'm just wondering, though, when it comes to organized labor, they're not necessarily speaking with one voice. Of course, we know that there are different proposals for the minimum wage figure when it comes to NLC and the TUC. NLC specifically asking for 794000 
TC is mentioning 447,000. Just wondering how you think this will influence how um, the, 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 the events of March 27 and 28 when it's time to talk. Well, um, I doubt if you, they will carry those figures to that place. <laughs> I think those figures are for media consumption. Uh, uh, 700 and some people a month in this Nigeria. Look, let's be realistic and come down to art. Lagos Island, yeah. Bushiri. You see, in Lagos now, you have to, you have bungalows again. No? Because these contractors that built two-story buildings, mm -hmm. they don't have water. You, get me? you see how sturdy, strong, how people really will mm -hmm. with cartons of water. I mean, those people, they are in their wages. They are not in this wage structure we are talking about. They are informal people. Mm -hmm. huh? Go to the car park, you see students going to school. They carry load. You see potters chasing them, and they give you money. Can you can you talk minimum wage to such people? Mm. You get me? So let us be realistic. If you are talking for academic purposes, which I think all this is what all this is all about, but they don't trickle down. You get me? And we have a, a realistic assessment because people like this, many are people. Sorry to refer to them as media. They are their living. They have families, they feed them. Some of them don't live here. It's when they have made money, they go in the interland yeah. to celebrate with their family or may do some other engagements. So we have a largely informal economy yeah. that is sustaining us in spite of our uh, uh, propensity to be talking about free market economy and to be borrowing money from people we can never repay. Mm. But, sir, Mr. Shubha, well, yes. my, my focus here is the fact that they're not speaking in one voice. Oh, they, yeah, okay. What, what, what do you think <laughs> that will be on, uh, I on think 27, they are 28? In one voice. It's only the, the figures that are different. Okay. We have discussed this year before. Mm -hmm. And I said it is, uh, uh, how do I, put, I call it a charade, or it's a way of getting back at the government. If you say the Naira rate is this, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can buy petrol like this. Why can't we earn this? Mm. I think that's the arithmetic of it, the logic of it. It's not serious. When they get to that meeting, 27, let them propose it. This government will sit with them on that. Mm. Government has already besieged them to be realistic. Mm. That's what they mean. Right. But if they carry that to the table, well, I wish all of them the best of luck in that all environment. All right, Mr. Shubo, we're still talking yeah. about the reality on ground here now. Uh, if we can delve on the issue of internally generated revenue and the commercial viability of uh, most states in Nigeria, you know, how important is this to the uh, clamor for tangible minimum wage for workers, you think? That is the, mm. that is the solution to it. Yeah. Internally generated revenue used in the service of the people. Yeah. But yeah, the opposite happens. Uh, states spend enormous resources to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. Ta that's taxation. The taxation should be plowed back to make life easy for the people and reduce inequality. That's the essence of taxation. You get me? That see what you cannot afford if we tax ourselves collectively. We provide it so that everybody can have a decent living. Let's say, I mean, that was how Tinubu made his name in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Internally generated revenue. Go, go and find out. That, and he has carried it to the center too. You get me? Because they are trying to, to raise the rate of our uh, taxation revenue yeah. to the GDP, mm -hmm. to increase it, you get it from the strategic place where it is now. And, and it, this is, if I may Internally comment, generated yeah. revenue, uh, this is the like, focus on it. This is against mm -hmm. the backdrop of over-dependence on the central government itself when it comes to uh, proceeds yeah, and the sharing. Lack. And they then are this issue is still there. They should yeah. be fighting for their rights. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that, look, let us generate revenue. Yeah. Some states can generate revenue more than they did, and be able to plow back mm -hmm. into the central post. I keep on, there are many federations, you know, we are, we are constituent states. Yeah. Some even almost richer than about six or ten of other states put together, mm -hmm. and ready to come back after taking care of the needs of their people. That's the essence of federalism. Yeah. Get me? Unity in diversity, we have it. But let us practice diversity like uh, the Bidens are doing in the U.S., although they are, <laughs> <laughs> and they have a diversity, inclusion, and equity. 
Yes. Earlier, Mr. Shibwali, you mentioned, which of course it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. about the governors being more transparent, talk, talking to them about, about being um, realistic, but they should also say, this is what we have yes. um, with us. But Labour is also insisting that you know these governors have displayed unwillingness to pay workers despite receiving bailouts. So they made reference to what was the case mm -hmm. in the, during um, um, President Muhammad, former President Muhammad Buhari's time. So do you think that in addition to what you said, we might need to see some transparency as regards what they did with the bailouts in that regard to, to move forward with the conversation? Okay, you see, the problem, the public perception of the governors is that uh, they cannot protect people. That is why even in that meeting, yeah. they asked for state police. You get me? How can you be asking for state police in the name of federalism that you are nearing, nearer to your people than the center? Mm -hmm. And then you're asking the center to come and determine minimum wage for you. It's a contradiction in terms. Indeed. Uh, it's unfederal, if you have to use that word. You get me? Because you are a federation of states. I'm not saying equal states, but we know you have our peculiarities. Yeah. Even the sea zones have their peculiarities in that terms of uh, industrial prospect, agricultural produce, and transportation infrastructure, and all that. Let everybody look into his state, look at their resources. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some of them, if they, if they are allowed to use their resources, they won't go to Abuja to ask for anything. They won't go to Abuja to ask for anything. But you see, since we are put in our uh, uh, federalism, yeah. we have divided the, 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 the powers mm -hmm. between the states and the federal government, we have to abide with what is on the ground. But if you look at the, the, the peculiarity of our system, the area where we have, we have the, the, the oil, mm -hmm. this is the fish that uh, lays the golden egg, is so undeveloped and underdeveloped, it is pathetic, mm -hmm. it is hopeless. That is annoying people. The way uh, the practices of office are being shown, paraphernalia of office, by the governors, mm -hmm. by the center, by the legislators, it's annoying people. Mm -hmm. Because you're asking for sacrifice, but you manifest ostentatious living and grandiose opulence. That has to be done. Somebody has to speak to them to, to lessen that. Well, it's provoking people. Mm -hmm. It is a pity that labor itself, you see, when you ca ca cry wolf all day long, there will be a day that the wolf will come, nobody will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I think labor is in that predicament now. It's of his own making, they, are, they don't have my sympathy. But they have a, a right to fight for the rights of Nigerian workers, to have living wage, given the peculiarities of their location and areas of residence. Okay, yeah. well said, Mr. Shobwale. Thank right. you so much. Hopefully, you have been, they will heed to your advice and progress will be made on um, March 27th and 28th. Before now, we'd like to thank you for your contribution, as always. Thank you. Mm -hmm.